What's up everybody and welcome back to Tropico 4 or 5 or 6 or 20 or whichever Tropico we're playing. We're playing number 5. This is Tropico Cinco. And today, we need to make sure that our exports are very, very strong. In the previous episode, we had done a pretty good job of making sure that we got ourselves settled early on in the game. However, our approval ratings are dropping, which means something is occurring. So let's go ahead and click on the little thumb icon right here and figure out what's going on. I mean, largely it's going to be the royalists that hate us. We need to start putting revolutionaries into power. It'll work out in the end. Basically, the game kind of shovels you or forces you or, I don't know, funnels you towards rebellion. You don't really have a choice. You have to rebel eventually. We only have two people who are unemployed. We only have eight homeless, so let's drop a few more houses in. And then once we've dropped a few more houses, we should be in good shape to go do other things and work on our industry. Because that's how we're going to be paying the bills as the game proceeds. The way that I like to build these is going to be different than the way everybody likes to build these. However, I tend to build like little rows like these and then seal them in really fast because I like the way that it looks. Some people aren't going to like that. I do. And so that's the way that we're going to be playing during the course of the game. Now, we did have a couple... Oh, that's right. We were exporting pineapples to make the king happy because he had a fruit care plan, which, I mean, if you call something a fruit care plan, it could be... It could mean any number of things. Who even knows what a fruit care plan actually does? But we need to make sure that we get a few more pineapples or at least something to export that's going to make us more money. Because if there's one thing I know that dictators like, it's that moolah, that guap, that change. Now, our next export cycle is going to be about $10,000. So as I said, you want to make sure you get these things strongly aligned in the early game so that you don't have to worry about money as you play through. There's nothing worse in this game than having to worry about money as you play. I like it once I'm starting to get like eighty, ninety thousand dollars per cycle, and I can just expand as much as I want. I can treat it like a birthday Royal balloon. Your Majesty has instructed me to present you with this letter of commendation for your achievements in the name of the Empire. Okay, and so what we need to do is we're gonna go with the mandate extension one more time. There it is. Did it ever complete our quest? It did. It completed our quest for the rebels. So now what we want to do is we want to start researching things. we got to get ourselves some building upgrades. Considering we've got a ton of farms, I'm going to say that we should probably go with a crop of farm upgrades. So the sickle gives you farm upgrades. The cowboys gives you ranch upgrades. The shovel gives you mine upgrades. Everything's pretty self-explanatory right here. If you're interested in seeing how long a particular research takes, you're going to go to this spot right here. Watch it as I put my clicker over. It's going to say seven months next to the sickle. I don't like how it disappears when I come down here to try and show you because it makes the whole tutorial aspect of this thing very, very difficult. But nonetheless, we will continue forward without complaining, complaining. There we are. And so now we're working on the sickle. The second that that gets done, we're going to be able to upgrade all of our farms, which is going to make them more effective, which makes us more money. What could ever be better? Let's build ourselves a new farm through our raw resources menu. Can we grow tobacco? Do we have any luck with that? We have reasonable luck with tobacco over here. Although, we could wait a little while until we get a little bit deeper into the forest. I realize that I am deforesting at a very, very high rate. Luckily, we don't need the logs for anything as we play the game, so it's not a huge issue. We could fit... No, it's not going to let... Okay, so I have to expand out in a different direction. Let's go ahead and take this road right here. And can this road grow... Can this road go through... Oh, it can. Lucky, lucky us. Okay. So let's go ahead and get this designated now, rather than later. And I'm actually not going to complete that right there. We'll go out like so. And no, I don't want that. To, ah, I hate the road building. I still hate the road building in this game. It still drives me crazy. The road building in this game will definitely... Oh, it's because there's unexplored area. Okay, so we're going to have to leave that for later. But anyways, let's go ahead and do some exploration too since we have extra money. Let's send somebody off to that mine over there. And you want to be careful because sometimes you get attacked while you're doing this. Occasionally pirates will raid your island and it's very, very disappointing. They stink the place up, they fart, they drink, they belch, they shoot. Which is probably the worst of all of their accolades. But anyways... I found this book in your office, Governor. Is written by Conrad Marx, and it has some interesting ideas on how we should build our society. Basically what she wants is she wants me to build a cotton plantation, which works out fine. That both diversifies our exports, and it allows us to open up a new industry if we can get it done, and so I don't have a problem doing that. Eh, the cotton field over there is going to be kind of mediocre. 
However, it can be done. Let's just go ahead and do it. I'm not going to think too hard on it because every time I do that, my head starts to hurt. And I don't like it when my cranium hurts. And so I'm going to try and avoid thinking too hard during this playthrough. I'm going to do my best to do as much dumb stuff along the way so that interesting things occur. Now, obviously, I think we need new houses because I'm seeing shacks cropping up all over the place. We have 12 homeless people. It doesn't seem like much, but in the realm of Tropico, that's actually quite a few. So let's go ahead and drop a few more houses. And I think it's going to be best if we drop them out here along the outskirts and so there it is I don't want them on the inskirts because that is where all of our impressive buildings are gonna be because if there's one thing I know about humanity it's everybody wants to be in the inskirt not the outskirts so the crown has sent us six thousand dollars to bail us out of bet or out of debt and so we will go ahead and take our next quest thanks to your efforts the revolutionary movement is growing stronger what you always want to do right here, and so there's a couple options. You can receive $4,000 on the spot. You can get a new trade route, but we don't have a trading license, so that's not really going to help us. Or we can import revolutionaries. Now, I realize it says that we can get trade routes with smugglers. I don't... I've clicked this before, and it doesn't appear to open up anything. It might. I think it opens up like one trade tab. I usually go with the import revolutionaries, because at this point in the game, there's no schools. And so we have no way to educate our citizens, and yet we can build buildings that require educated citizens. So I almost unanimously take educated citizens on this one. I think I've taken the trade routes like one time, just to see what it did, so that I could tell you guys. And basically, it opens up... If you take the trade route, if you come back over here and you click on this, it'll have this little thing right here that says trade, and there will be one smuggler's route lit up right in here. And so, there's nothing we need to import right now, though, which is the major problem with doing something like that. This is not connected to a road, so it's not going to be functioning properly, so let's go ahead and get it connected to a road, so that it can be out here trying to function. There we go, that road's going to be messed up, we'll have to fix that later. But right now, things are looking pretty stellar. Our export... News. While searching through the crates of colony supplies, we found a sickle. Now we have something that goes perfectly with our hammers. This will boost production sky high. I can almost see the glorious future. Okay, so that means that our research is done. Now that we've got the sickle, what that's going to do for us is if we go to all of our buildings right here... And we take a look under the Upgrades tabs. There's going to be an upgrade for each one that makes the effectiveness much, much higher. First things first, let's increase their budget. That one's not connected by a road. It should connect in just a moment. I want to make sure all these are high budget right now, though. Okay, everything's high budget. Let's go through and do the upgrades because we have the money to do so right now. So bean processing on that one. Pollination parcel right there. Actually, that's not good. I probably shouldn't have done that. I didn't read that properly. So what it does is it sets out an AOE that makes all the other pineapple fields around it better. I'll probably put a pineapple field right there behind it just to make sure that it works out okay. For sugar, we get fiber fertilization. So we'll do that. And then finally, with our cotton plantation, it reduces workers by two, but you get 20% more. So essentially, you're putting the cotton gin or something into motion right there so that your city or, I'm sorry, your society functions with its cotton a lot better. Over here, we got kind of unlucky with our export cycle. The king will bail us out, though, if it gets too bad. Next, we're going to research cowboys because I want to do some ranch upgrades. We're going to start dropping some ranches into some of the free space back here to make our... We'll make a little bit more cash. So if we do cattle ranches, we'll get skins and we'll also get meat. If we do... No, no, we get milk and meat. That's what it is. If we do llamas, we get wool. If we do pigs, we just get meat. And later on, we can use canneries. An upgraded cannery can make use of all that kind of stuff. You can start making spam and all manner of other meal abom abomination meals in a flash of brilliance his royal majesty figured out how to fix all of your island's problems through the construction of a single building huzzah so now he wants us to build a banana plantation so as i was saying i love spam but most people don't we can make processed meats essentially if you wanted me to stop beating around the bush and stop being so loquacious or something like that we could become terse or laconic instead there's your vocabulary expansion for the day I always try like there's this thing that as a rule in English classes that I always tried to expand upon where just because you have the ability to use a ton of big words doesn't mean that you should all the time this is gonna bail us out only slightly you run the risk of sounding pretentious every now and again and a lot of people will be like I don't care if I sound pretentious to people that don't know what I mean but I would prefer that everybody understand me far more than sounding smart or just sounding like you have a big vocabulary or something that's just me personally so I try to limit it but I do like dropping them bombs every now and again them six syllable words someone stole my manuscript and published it under a pseudonym 
It was an autobiographical story about two men on a mountain who want to form deep male bonds. They even stole the surrealistic chapter where fairies prance under a rainbow. The circumstances behind the theft are very queer. <laughs> oh my god, I love the fact that the game doesn't feel the need to be like super political correct, politically correct or anything like that. It just makes jokes for the sake of being funny. And what this has done is now we've unlocked the second tier of stuff. What I would highly recommend right now is a lumber mill and then a military fort. And so we're going to go with a lumber mill first because I'll probably drop that over there on this corner and then we'll put the we'll put a lumber harvesting operation over here and then we'll also put a lumber mill over here and we'll start making a little bit of money from that. Let's go ahead and drop our banana plantation too because the king seems really stoked about bananas. I don't know why. There's probably something Freudian going on in that vicinity, but I don't question it because that guy hold, like he holds the keys to the guillotine, which means I don't say anything. How much of this can I demolish? Let me rotate the camera around to get a better feel for how much of my farmland is being diminished when I do this. Uh, I thought I could get rid of that big rock right there. I guess not. Phallus rock will go undestroyed. There we go. And so there's our banana farm. That should help us out. I'm going to drop another road over here. So let's do that. You got to make sure your infrastructure is always taken care of. If you don't have enough roads and things, the game just becomes a convoluted mess. And then in order to keep things even, as soon as we make a little bit more money, I'm going to drop some more houses over here. Next quest. Did you know that there are treasures buried on our island? We should investigate. Okay, so we'll get revolutionary support if we research a shovel technology. We'll take it for now, just because I like to get the educated citizens later on. But, at the moment, it's not going to be insanely useful. We're kind of stuck until our next export cycle anyways. Which is not actually looking as though it's going to be that lucrative. I mean, that's fine. His Royal Majesty has instructed me to present you with Okay, and so we're going to go with a 12-month mandate extension. One more time right there. So now we're at three years and eight months until our mandate is up, which is more than enough time to get a revolution brewing. Because revolutions are brewed, by the way. They don't talk about that much, but revolutions are brewed. Comrade Governor, the more I read the works of Comrade Marx, the more sure I am that our revolution must be a socialist revolution. Okay, and so now we've gotten a call to make the foreman technology, which is going to allow us to assign managers to different buildings. I'll go through and talk about what managers do once we get to that point. For now, we're just going to accept the quest, log it away for later. I was talking about brewing revolution. If you stew a revolution, I find that the broth comes out a little bit thick. And so I always try to brew rather than stew, and you definitely don't want to bake. The baking is just not going to work at all. If you bake a revolution, everybody just sits around talking about it, and then nothing ever gets done. We've got $16,000 right now because I think the king dropped cash on us right at the same time as we got an export. We just discovered the number of times you need to get hit by a plank to actually discover something. It is around seven, depending on the plank in question. We call this the plank constant. I am sure it will become very important one day. Alright, and so now that we've discovered the plank constant and everybody now has flattened furrowed brows from beating each other repeatedly with planks, we're going to start and do, let's just do the order that they want us to. We've got plenty of time to research all of our military technologies and whatnot, so we'll do foreman first, we'll get our managers, and then we'll keep on cooking. For now, we need to diversify our exports by going to our raw resources menu. We're going to make some ranches, I think. We can do... Eh, Goats are looking okay. Chivos are looking all right. Cattle land not looking as equitable as I would hope. However, we can put a... Actually, the smart way to do this would be to go like so. And then if I can get a road built right here... Oh, I can't. Damn it. Okay, so let's stop this from happening right now. We're going to cancel that. We'll get $800 back, so we kind of dented our... My plan was to put in a building right there and then do a road and then do a row of them. Unfortunately, this mountain is getting in the way and causing me great chagrin. I guess I'll have to pick a new place for all of it. I'm going to put it... Llamas definitely not feeling it right now, which I think is always an indicative factor. If llamas don't like your land, I think that that's something you should probably be aware of. I mean, it's kind of scary. I like to keep my llamas happy because llamas are adorable. We can do goats, which means we get milk out of it. Not a lot of great space for us to do this, and I don't really want to reorganize myself according just to drop a couple ranches either. According to our ranch needs anyways. Let's start with a logging camp. We'll drop a logging camp right there. 
which means that the next thing that we need to drop is going to be an industrial building, namely a lumber mill. And we'll drop the lumber mill somewhere along the way back to the dock so that everything is kind of on the same path. Some people recommend putting it right here next to the dock. I don't do that. I try to keep it near the dock but still near the export place as well so that they're getting it on the way. So like right here, for example, would be a reasonable place that I would put it. I try to keep this space open for our defenses, which are going to become important later. Invasions play a much larger portion of the part in Tropico 5 than they did in Tropico 4. You're going to get invaded a lot more in this game than you did previously, which reminds me I should probably start defending us from things. So guard towers. I'm going to put a guard tower right there. And a guard tower right there. I'm going to have about eight of these when we first start out. The guard towers don't do a ton of damage, but they do provide a distraction for all of the enemies that are going to be invading us. Namely, once we declare independence, the king is going to evade us. And also, we can have pirate attacks and things like that along the way where pirates will come and try and destroy one of our buildings. It just it gets super hairy super fast. And I'm not just saying that because pi like pirates are predisposed to having beards and things of that nature. It just gets bad. His Majesty's plans have been hindered by supply shortages. To offset these setbacks, the Crown demands additional resources from the colonies. Okay, and so we've got a quest to export 3,500 bananas, but our mandate will be extended by six months. Because I am a fan of being in power, we are going to take that one. Looks like we have a homeless problem right now. What's going on here? We have 19 homeless and 10 unemployed. Okay, we'll solve that in just a minute. I mean, the lumber between the lumber mill and the logging camp we should be able to fix that pretty quickly that's going to handle all the jobs i think so there's our lumber mill let's go ahead and make people happy by ramping that on up that's going to take care of eight of our unemployed and then the lumber camp should pick up the remainder of the slack right there i'm also going to use a road to wipe out those shacks because they're ugly and they make me unhappy our next import cycle is going to be huge We're getting thirteen thousand dollars a little bit of a word on your output cycles Okay, and so we're going to take the educated citizens, like always. Other members of the research team. Suddenly, it dawned on us. We're four men. You get it? Four men? Incidentally, we also discovered bad puns. <laughs> As a fan of bad puns, I'm going to take it. Well done, Penultimo. Well done. You've earned yourself a $10 million bonus. Enjoy your new palace. Your palace that I built on top of other palaces. My palace is so grand that it actually, the foundation is made out of other palaces. Lumber camp out here hasn't been constructed yet, but it should be completed very, very shortly, at which point I will increase its budget as well. And I didn't... Okay, there it is. We'll have to increase your budget. And I actually think we have a worker shortage right now, which is a little bit disappointing, but that's okay. We've got a little bit of time on our hands. We need to build some guard towers too. So basically, I like to line my dock with guard towers because this is where they always attack from. And so what I do is I'll just drop towers like so. We're going to spend our entire import cycle on defenses because I believe in Tropico. And we got to keep ourselves safe from the nasty buck-toothed invaders, the buck-toothed buccaneers that are going to be coming very, very shortly. Getting attacked by pirates sucks because they destroy one of your buildings and then they run off into the sunset just like, Arr, we took your rum. And it, it sucks. That's the only thing I can really say about it. Okay, we have nobody to work in said guard towers, which is a little bit... Well, it's bad. I was going to say it's unfortunate, but it's bad. Comrade Governor, we need to inspire the people and set an example for the proletariat. We need to create a working class hero. Okay, and so what it wants me to do is assign a foreman now. And when you're assigning a manager, let's go ahead and pause the game so I can talk about this. The manager is essentially a one-time person that you put into a building. They work there as the manager, and they do something to it. Now, they can skim off the top and put money into your personal funds. They can increase the efficiency of the building, so you can do all manner of good and evil through your managers. For now, I'm going to go to the lumber mill, and if we wanted to assign a manager... We have three available. We have a tycoon, which means that effectiveness on maximum budget is increased by 10. We can do a mentor, which means the effectiveness of other by nearby buildings is increased by 1. Or we can go with a magnate, which means that a mining and oil building gets better. The only choice right here is tycoon, so we're going to hire the tycoon to be the manager at this location. And since they are at max budget, he's actually going to make them work a lot harder, and they're going to get a better job quality out of it. They're also going to make us more money, which is a really, really good thing. We need to handle our research as well. Let's go ahead and research the trigger. No, we have a quest for the shovel. Let's do the shovel first. So there it is. We are now researching the shovel. And we've already seen this one, so I'm going to import three educated citizens like I always do. 
they may just go and be unemployed because I don't have a whole lot of jobs for educated citizens right now. There's our line of towers that defends Tropico. That should help us out during later invasions. Some people are going to disagree with this strategy. We can always take these down later for a slight... Did I do something dumb right here? Did I make this face the wrong way? No, it has no input. Okay, that's fine. It's going to take a little while for the lumber camp to supply, or the logging camp to supply enough logs for the lumber camp, or I'm sorry, the lumber mill to actually get its job done. So that's just something that, it takes a little bit of time for an industry to get set up in this game. We're going to take the 12 month mandate. We're almost up to four years of mandate left. Let's go ahead and have a look and see. We've got 14 homeless, which means it is time to build a few more houses. Let's jump into our residential menu and we will drop a few more houses, I guess, out here. This seems like a pretty good plan. Let's expand out our residential horizons on the edge right there. Good. I like the way this looks. This is actually turning out much better than most of my normal projects do. Typically my projects become kind of ugly and oblong with regards to the way that they develop over time. This place has given us lots of flat land, so luck being, we should be able to make a society that's making very, very good use of what we have. We also want to start thinking about, once we clear out the map anyways... Your efforts. Our research team, that is to say me, discovered the shovel. Forty times. If I find out who put it there, I will kill him. Anyway, I gave it to the miners so they can put it somewhere safe. Like, underground. God. So that's another quest down. We've got our research completed. We want to do the trigger, because that's going to give us a military fort, which is a special building you can't build, I don't think, any other time. I think you can only build it during the colonial period, but don't quote me on that. My Tropico 5 experience is limited. Very, very limited. And so we're going to go with a high budget on all of our buildings. You can control click, by the way. If you want to set the budget for all buildings of a similar type, control click the build, or control click when you click on the dollar budget thing up there. And it'll work out great every single time. You still have a lot of shacks around, which is concerning. I don't know if these are our educated citizens. No, no, no. Emily Collins went to grade school. Looks like she works in the fields. Now, working at this field, she should be well off, but for whatever reason, she's still living in a shack or something. There they go. They're packing up now. They're packing up the shacks. And so I think this is a great spot for us to break off this episode. We've got a really strong export going. We have a really good opening to our game right now. I'm pretty pleased about the way things are starting off. I'm going to see you guys in the next episode. My name is Splattercat. Thank you for joining me here at the Nerd Castle for another episode of Tropico 5. I always am happy to have you here in my humble domicile to share games with me. They are my passion in life has hit a minor setback. It doesn't seem to work. The crown is determined to throw as much fruit at it as necessary to make it work. I'm going to go with prices. So basically there's been a fruit shortage and we got to export 10,000 fruits. I'm going to lower the price by 20% to get six months mandate now and then six months on completion. But as I was saying, we are going to complete our episode right here. I'll see you all in the next episode. Take care out there, everybody. Games are my passion and it makes me really, really happy that you can join me. I've got way too much stuff going on right now. We've completed the military for it. But anyways, I look forward to seeing you all in the next episode and sharing my passion one more time. Take care, everybody, and hi do.